getting disconnected. Uh, I'm just going to share the screen. It's working. Okay. Is it also working? Okay. Let's resume. Home work for the Vasari Vari. Shri Rudra Vacha. Najatu Jagadi Shoham. Nabi Krishna Krapas Padam. Param Taddasa Dasanam Sadhanu Graha Kaam Mukha. This is Lord Shiva actually thinks. Shri Rudra said, I am not the Lord of the universe, nor an object of Krishna's mercy. I am just a poor soul, always hankering for the favor of the servants of his servants. I can only hanker for the mercy of Krishna's servants because I am not fortunate enough to have it. She Parikshit said, on hearing this, the sage Narada was shocked, thinking he had acted offensively. He at once stopped praising what she was non different from Krishna and began to speak in a soft voice. Naradu Vacha Satyam Neva Bhavan Vishnur Vaishnamanam Chaturgamam Nigudha Mahimash Penim Veti Vidya Payat Yapi. She Narada said, You certainly know the confidential, mysterious glories of Lord Vishnu and the Vaishnavas. And you expertly explain those glories. Durgamam, Anye Durgayam, mysterious glories indicate that uh, others don't know. It's difficult to understand. Durgamam. Other, for others, it's very difficult to understand because it's very confidential. These deal with the confidential truths about. Uh, about uh, pure devotion, service, and to the Lord. So they are very confidential. Although the greatness of the Lord and his devotees is a fathomless mystery, Lord Shiva and other empowered Vaishnava Acharyas are able to help ordinary conditioned souls understand it. Narada hopes Lord Shiva will accept praise, at least on this account. Atohi Vaishnava Shrethai Rishyate Nanugraha Krishnascham Mahimanam Te Prito Vitanu Te Dhikam. The best of Vaishnavas therefore aspire for your mercy. Lord Krishna also has great regard for you and extensively spreads your glories. Krishna spreads the fame of Lord Shiva sometimes through representatives and sometimes himself. Adhikam. He has great regard for Lord Shiva. Uttamati Adhikam extensively, extensively, he is satisfied and he spreads the glory. Sometimes through representatives, Vaishnava Vargataha, Atmanova Sakashat, he uh, Sanatana Goswami Prabhu has noted that he glorifies Lord Shiva more than the community of Vaishnavas and more than himself. Kativaram Shri Krishnena Vara Vidhamurti Bhaktiya Bhavanta Maharadhya Vihita Katisantina has Krishna not worshipped you many times in his various incarnations and taken from you many boons 
Tadeva Darshayati. Now he demonstrates that, that uh, he um, sp spreads Lord Shiva's glories more than, than uh, the community of his uh, uh, ordinary devotees. And uh, he makes him more popular than himself. Many times this has happened. Those who want to see examples of Lord Shiva bestowing a boon upon Krishna can read the Dhanadharma section and other parts of the Vamana Purana, which describe how Sri Krishna received the Sudarshan Chakra and how Samba became his son. So these, these things are found, these incidents are described in the Dana Dharma and other portions of uh, Vamana Purana. Sri Parikshit Vacha, Vitishvatvata Sahasa, Dhairiyam Kartum Vashatma Vahn, Lajjito Dhradamuthaya, Naradasya Mukham Haraha, Parabhyam Pitathe Dharkyam Mama Tanna Vadeeriti. Sri Parikshit said, hearing this, Lord Shiva, who no longer maintained his gravity, ashamed, he sprang to his feet, covered Narada's mouth with both hands, and said, Don't even mention that arrogance of mine. Lord Shiva felt embarrassed to be reminded that he had offered benedictions to the Supreme Personality of God. Anantaram Vacho Chaisas Savis Mayamahone. He then boldly told Narada with surprise in his voice, just see the most incomprehensible power of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Putting aside his embarrassment, Lord Shiva pointed out to Narada the wonderful uniqueness of the pastimes of the Supreme, the wonderful uniqueness of the pastimes the Supreme Lord enacts with his devotees, in which the Lord takes upon himself many severe vows and penances just to win the devotees' blessings. This itself shows how much Krishna likes the devotional service rendered by Lord Shiva. But Lord Shiva is not an ordinary devotee. Um, there are extraordinary devotees. We see, for instance, Nanda Maharaj. Krishna carries his shoes on his hand. Mm -hmm. That shows how much Krishna likes Nanda Maharaj. So like that, he does austerities, penances of very severe type uh, in order to make Lord Shiva happy, in order to glorify Lord Shiva. Um, and he seeks the blessings of Lord Shiva, recorded in the Puranas. But this is out of his Bhakta Vatsalya. This, does not, this should not be misunderstood to mean that Lord Shiva uh, is... Um, is uh, the original Godhead and so on. You should not have mistaken conception. We see even between Krishna and Balaram, uh, this is a unique feature that Krishna's own expansions are devoted to him. His own expansions are devoted to him. Between Krishna and Balaram, Balaram is a devotee of Krishna. Uh, similarly, we see Sankarsana is a devotee of Vasudeva. Sankarsana Vishnu is a devotee of Vasudeva Vishnu. We see Lakshmana is Lakshmana, Bharata, and Shatrugna. All three Vishnu Tattvas are devoted to Lord Ram. Lord Ram is a master. Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrugna are his servants. These are all um, Vishnu Tattva forms who are Vaishna, having a Vaishnava nature. So similarly, Lord Shiva is Lilaya Svikrita Maya Sparsha. He is the Supreme Lord, but the distinction between the Vishnu Tattvas and uh, Adi Shiva or Sadashiva is that as a pastime, he has accepted the touch of Maya, but he is not under the control of Maya in the form of uh, Lord Shiva, the original Lord Shiva. So he is also having the nature of a Vaishnava. It is Wrong to go to Lord Lakshman and uh, and 
consider that he and offer prayers that you are equal to Lord Ram. Lakshmana will never accept it because he does not like it. Even though he is substantially the same as Lord Ram as a substance, um, he will never accept it. That is because he has accepted subordination. This is, these are the inconceivable pastimes of the Supreme Lord himself. Bharata performs various uh, austerities uh, in order to please Lord Ram. And Bharata is uh, also a Vishnu Tattva expansion. Similarly, Lord Shiva, he is an expansion, one step further removed from Vishnu Tattva expansion, he is Adi, the, the form of Adi Shiva, Sada Shiva, is an expansion. But nevertheless, he has the nature of a Vaishnava and he is, his devotion to the Supreme Lord is greater than um, the devotion of the regular devotees. So that Krishna is very attracted to them. So these are the Lord's inconceivable pastimes. Aho vichitra gambhira mahima dhir madhishwara vividhesh aparadhesh no pekshetha kriteshwapi Oh, my Lord is so sober. He's such a deep and varied ocean of great qualities. Even though I have committed many kinds of offenses against him, he still does not reject me. The ocean is too deep for one to measure. What to speak of diving into it and reaching its bottom? The ocean cannot be moved from its fixed plane, and the opposite shore is far beyond anyone's vision. Similarly, the Supreme Lord's qualities are countless and they include every possible kind of greatness. And each of his qualities is unrestricted and boundless. Lord Shiva, uh, Lord, there are several descriptions like this provided by uh, Vaishnava Acharyas, even Ramanuja Acharya, for instance. He, he describes the Supreme Lord's qualities like this. Unlimited ocean of transcendental attributes. Many times we come across this. Lord Shiva considered himself offensive to have shown off his own power before Lord Krishna by offering him benedictions. Other offenses he had committed against him were too painful for him to recall. But Sri Krishna never considers anything done by Lord Shiva offensive, since Lord Shiva always acts in this world only to promote the cause of Krishna's devotion service, either directly or indirectly. Madhishwaraha Sri Krishna. Yato Bhavidesha Aparadeshu Varadhanati Nijeshwarya Maha Gurvam Prakashanadi Upeshu Kateshwapi no Pikshepa. Krishna is my master. Even though I have committed several offenses of several types, he does not neglect me. Adhyapi Kuru Deva Nijapantu Bhavata. Because um, he always promotes devotion service. Parikshudavaja. Parmanandito Tritva Padayor Bhaveshyattam Narada Paritushtava Krishna Bhakti Rasaptutam. Sri Parikshit said, Seeing Lord Shiva completely absorbed in the transcendental taste of pure devotion for Krishna Narada, please beyond limit, grasped Lord Shiva's feet, made him sit down again, and spoke to appease him. Narada argues that Shiva is very dear to Krishna. Now here we should always remember that Krishna is the master. Vishnu is the master of Shiva, even though Shiva is his own expansion. Um, and between the Vishnu Tattvas also, you have a master-servant relationship. That is not like the uh, Vishnu-Jiva relationship. The Jivas are servants Constitutionally, substantially, but with the Supreme Lord, uh, when he is the master of Balaram and he is the master of uh, one particular form is the master of another form, uh, it is because they want to experience 
uh, Prema Bhakti in different ways. So not Sankrashna worships, not Vasudeva. To relish devotional service. Uh, there is a pleasure in serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead to such an extent that he himself engages in devotional service to himself in particular forms. These are inconceivable, extraordinary features of the Supreme Lord. Shri Narada Vacha, Na Paratha Vakashas, Na Paratha Vakashas Te, Preyasah Kaschit Achyu Te, Kadachil Loka Dashtya Api Jato Naspin Prakashate. Shri Narada said, you are so dear to Lord Achyuta. Is it possible you could ever offend him? So people sometimes see what they think are your offenses. He never sees them at all. In reality, uh, Lord Shiva never offends. There's no question of Lord Shiva offending uh, his master, Lord Vishnu. Prayasaha. Paramapriyas, the Supreme Lord, um, he does not consider any of these activities to be offensive, to be offensive in any manner, because prayers are high, because Lord Shiva is very dear, extremely dear, Paramapriyas is most dear to the Lord. Swabhahum paladruptasya sadhu padravakharina Maya Bhattani Rudhasya, Vidyamanasya Chakrina, Atapraya Varnasya, Nijam Bhattasya Putrava, Palikasya Payaprana, Ranchatam Shri Haristutaha. Varna was a cause of trouble for saintly persons. Too proud of the strength of his arms, he used magic to arrest Aniruddha and fight against Krishna, the wielder of the test. When you saw that Varna, your devotee, whom you had treated like a son, was on the verge of being killed to save his life, you offer prayers to Sri Hari. Sadhyo Hitva Rushambrito Dattva Nitya Swarupatam Bhavat Parshadatam Nitam Dura Pam Sudhairapi. At once, Krishna put aside his anger. Now pleased, the Lord gave Varna a form like his own and raised him to be one of your associates, a position rarely obtained even by demigods. So here from text uh, 21, no, in text 21, 22, 23, um, Sanatana Goswami points out, uh, Narada Muni points out ultimately uh, that uh, this is the situation. There's no question of uh, Lord Shiva committing any offense even though by worldly perception, there appears to have been an offense. In the fight against Barna Sula, Lord Krishna had already lifted a solution to just kill Barna, his son's enemy. But at that moment, Lord Shiva interceded. He came in between. Despite Barna's long list of offenses against Vishnu and the Vaishnavas, um, Barna had the one credit of being Lord Shiva's sincere devotee. This impressed Lord Krishna so much that he gave Varna a four-armed form of his own. He Krishna then told Lord Shiva, Chattvarosya bhujashishta bhavishyatya jam bhavishyatya jaram araha parshadat mukhyo bhavato na kutashchit mayo suraha. This demon, who still has four arms, will be immune to old age and death, and he will serve as one of your principal attendants. Thus he will have nothing to fear on any account. From this, it's, it's clear if Lord Shiva had actually offended uh, Krishna, this would not have happened. From this, we understand there is a very intimate relationship of pure love for Krishna's lotus feet here. Lord Shiva, he loves his master, Krishna. Krishna is his master. And Lord Shiva is a very beloved subordinate and servant of, uh, of Lord Krishna. Bhavascha Vaishnava Drohi Gargyadi Pyasu Dushcha Rai Tapo Bhir Bhagavani Pyo Nam Yali Kam Varam Dave. 
when such enemies of the Vaishnavas as Gargya worshipped you by severe penances, the benedictions you gave them were not without loopholes because Gargya and others were inimical to the Yadavas and Pandavas who were all staunch Vaishnavas. Lord Shiva rewarded their worship with imperfect boons. According to the Vrindavan Upanishad, um, Gargya Balaki was a learned son of the sage in Gargya, who was too proud of his acquired knowledge. By Lord Shiva's blessing, Gargya obtained a son, a son, but not one who could destroy the Yadu dynasty as Gargya had wanted, only one who could frighten and frustrate the Yadus. Similarly, Jayadratha received a limited boon that he could only once defeat each of the Pandavas except Arjuna. So Dakshina was allowed to destroy any enemy of his choice who was not a proper follower of Brahmanical culture, but this power ultimately turned against him. The full stories of these hapless devotees of Lord Shiva are recorded in Sri Harivam Shri Vishnu Purana and Sri Man Bhagavatam. Vaishnava, Yadava, Pandava, the Yascha. The Vaishnavas here refer to the Yadavas, the Pandavas, and so on. The Drohavanta Yi Dhargya Deya, Adishabda Jayadhrata Sudakshina Deya. Tebhya. So here Gargya gar, 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 gar refers to Jayadratha, um, Sudakshina, and all of them. Gargya is one, Jayadratha is another, Sudakshina is another. They had engaged Bhakula Tapas, Yaya, Vam, Sevaman, and Yopi, even though they had served Lord Shiva with uh, extreme austerities. He did not give them a spotless uh, benediction. Lord Shiva did not give that. He could have, but had he been offensive, he would have done that, but he did not. He gave uh, spotted of, uh, spotted benediction. Some, something, some, some loophole here and there. Okay, the rest of the commentary has been paraphrased here. Shri Harivamsha Vishnu Purana Bhagavata Yukta. So these uh, Tattar Visheshas Chai Shri Harivamsha Vishnu Purana Bhagavata Yukta. These uh, details are found in Harivamsha Vishnu Purana Bhagavata and other scriptures. Chitra Ketu Prakritayo Dhyopya Dhyopyam Sha Shita Hare Nindaka Yadya Piswasya Tibhyo Kupyas Tapapina All the Chitra Ketu and others like him foolishly dared to criticize you. You never became angry at them because they were surrendered devotees of memory portions of Lord Hari. It is foolish for anyone to criticize Lord Shiva. When Chitra Ketu committed this mistake, he was not yet a pure Vaishnava. Otherwise, he would not have exercised his discrimination so wrongly. But Chitra Ketu, even as a neophyte, had a connection with Lord Shiva, an expansion of Sri Krishna's first expansion, Balaram, had a connection with Lord Shesha, an expansion of Sri Krishna's first expansion, Balaram. So Lord Shiva was not offended by Chitra Ketu's laughing. When Lord Shiva sat with Parvati on his lap in the presence of a group of sages, so it has been stated here so far that uh, because his own devotees are not Vaishnavas, he never gave them pure benedictions. Ida means what Vaishnavi Vishnu Sambhanta Matra Apekshanya Na Avamanya Se Ityaha Chitriket Kutu. Now she points out this is wow, extreme intelligence to go in and analyze the extreme intelligence, extreme intelligence. So Atanjo Swami for having revealed uh, these incidents. Um, he should be honored for his extreme penetrating intelligence. Hmm. Now consider uh, persons who are Inimical to Lord Shiva in some manner, almost have done something to criticize him, insult him in some manner. Simply because they had some relationship with Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva did not, does not, or did not, does not 
insult them. Um, Chitra Ketu had surrendered unto uh, Lord Hari's Amsha, Anantashesh. Yajyapi Shri Balarama Seva Avatara Sheshaha Tathapi Dena Saha Bhagavato Abheda Abhrayana Hare Ramsha. Ittyukti. Hare Ramsha Ittyukti. Looks like a typing mistake. Amsha Ittyukti. Uh, even though Lord Sri Hari's Amsha, uh, even though Shesha is an Amsha of Sri Balaram, still considering that uh, Sri Balaram is not different from Bhagwan Hari, he has been described, Shesha has been referred to here as an Amsha of Lord Hari. Even those who are not uh, sufficiently aware of the position of Sri Shiva. They were Swasya Shiva Sri Yajjibi Nindaka Nindam Kurvanti. Even when they criticized Lord Shiva, you still did not become angry. In fact, with the, uh, the Chitra Ketu incident, we noticed Lord Shiva was not angry with uh, Chitra Ketu at all. Not angry at all. Krishnasya pritaye tasmat shashtyam mapyafi varan chatta tad bhakta tai vat tad bhakta tai vat chaturya vishesha vishesha arthita vaya. Once just to please Lord Krishna, you expressed a desire to become even greater than he, but then you very cleverly modified your request, asking him instead to make you his devotee. This is, this in Lord Shiva's opinion was a particularly egregious offense based on the desire to be worshipped. He confesses in the Vritsa Sarnama Stotra, Alabdhva Chatmana Pujam Samyag Aradhito Harihi Maya Tasmadapi Shreishtyam Vanchatta Hankrit Atmana. When I didn't receive the worship I wanted, I served Lord Hari thoroughly in devotion service, but with the egoistic motive of becoming even greater than he in this way. Lord Shiva berates himself, criticizes himself. But the truth is that even then he acted only for Krishna's pleasure. He thought that Krishna would be displeased by a direct request that Lord Shiva become his servant. Since Krishna is self-effacing, since Krishna is humble by nature, he does not like exalted persons like Shiva to act subordinate to him. Uh, so Lord Shiva instead submitted what seemed the opposite request. Krishna has declared his servant greater than himself. Man bhakta puja adhika. More important than worshipping me is worshipping my devotee. Therefore, Lord, Sh Lord Shiva cleverly asked for that greater position. Lord Shiva had also once overheard Krishna while playing dice with his queen Rukmini, declare his devotee even more glorious than himself in order to alert the dice into acting as his devotees by serving him nicely. It's right from Sri Sanatana Goswami's point. Ato, okay. Ato Brahmadi Samprarthya Mukti Dana Dikari Tam Bhavate Bhagavate Cha Durga Ye Bhagavan Ata. Therefore, the Supreme Lord granted you and the Goddess Durga the authority to give liberation. The liberation for which Brahma and many others pray. Without Lord Vishnu's personal sanction, no one can become free from the cycle of birth and death. Harim Vina Naiva Sritim Taranti. Moreover, Lord Vishnu abides by such statements from the Vedic Shastras which constitute his own laws. But having promised Lord Shiva a position even better than his own, Lord Vishnu deputed to both Lord Shiva and his wife the power to bestow liberation on his behalf. So this explains how, um, on one hand, we come across the statement that uh, uh, only Lord Vishnu can grant liberation. And there are scriptural statements which indicate that Lord Shiva and his wife Bhagavati uh, Durga Devi, he also grants uh, liberation. Ataha Swabhakta Upreksha. Uh, 
वैष्णव अपेक्षा है तो अहो ब्रह्मादि दुष्प्राप्ते ऐश्वर्ये सत्यपी दृशे तत्सर्व सुखम ृत्यवृत्ष You appear totally insane. Who knows? But you would go that naked with his wife and attendants. Drishto, these things are impossible in a dharmic environment. Drishto, ya Bhagavat Bhakti Lampatya Mahiman Bhuta. Tad Bhavan Eva Krishna Sya Nitya Paramavad Lapa. Today I have finally seen their amazing, uncontrollable eagerness to serve the Supreme Lord in pure devotion. No wonder Krishna always loves you the most. आह किम वाच्या नवच्छिन्ना कृष्णस्य प्रियता कोई तत्प्रसादे न भोगो न्येति तत्प्रियताम् गताः What more can I say? Krishna's love for you is never interrupted. By your mercy, many others have become dear to him. Now we एवं भगवत् परमानु विश्वलक्षण निर्दिशन उपसंहर्ति अहो इति चतुर्भिः So, in four verses, uh, Narada Muni has indicated uh, symptoms, um, Lord Shiva's symptoms of having received the supreme mercy from Bhagwan, the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna. Mahon Madhya ne dhriki. Uh, Lord Shiva does not follow the conventional uh, rules for worldly dharma, dancing, movement, expert, expert, uh, um, and so on. Ato bhagavat bhaktau lampat yasya. भरोत्दिशिश महायोगीश्वर से आत्मा राम शिरोमणे पार्वती रमण से अभी दृश्यत्व आपादना ही इस the happy husband of Parvati Devi he is the crest jewel of the आत्मा रामस those who are self satisfied he is the master of all the great yogis still this is his nature तब तस्माद ने भी दशक प्रचलित प्रभृत यहाँ तस्य कृष्ण से प्रियतम प्रेमास पदत पुम प्राप्ता एंड बाय लॉर्ड शिवस मर्सी द टेन प्रचलितास एंड अदर्स दे हैव बिकम वेरी डियर बिलवर्ड डिवोटीज ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण नारद इज अमेज्ड एट द ग्रेटेस्ट मास्टर ऑफ योगा डिसिप्लिन द चीफ ऑफ सेल्फ सेटिस्फाइड सेंटियर्स द हस्बैंड ऑफ मटेरि� Completely disregards common standards of cultured behavior. He does not even walk and dance normally. Lord Shiva's natural expressions of his inner feelings, if exhibited by anyone else, would be considered unacceptable or insane. Narada understands, however, that Lord Shiva's unusual behavior is a sign of his exceptional greatness as a Vaishnava, who deeply tastes the ecstasies of devotional exchanges with the supreme person. That for many serious aspirants for spiritual perfection, such as that. Ten prachetas have taken shelter of Lord Shiva to obtain the rare gift of Vishnu Bhakti. 
If you simply analyze Srimad Bhagavatam, you will certainly understand the exalted Vaishnava nature of Lord Shri. Very, very clear. Another praise is Parvati. Parvatyasya prasadena bhavas tat priyakrata tatva ghitya visheshena bhavato yameva by Mother Parvati's mercy. Also, many other persons have become dear to Lord Krishna. She knows in detail the true nature of both Lord Krishna and you. He is Krishna's sister. The Puranas tell of persons like Jana Sharma, who by Parvati's mercy became great Vaishnavas. Jana Sharma's story will be told in the second part of Sri Prabhupada Bhagavad Amrita. Krishnasya Bhumini Vaisha Sneha Patram Sadambika Adeva Bhavanath Ma Ramu Ketam Apekshate. Mother Parvati Ambika is Krishna's own sister who always receives his affection. That is why you care for her even though fully satisfied in yourself. Even though you are an Atma Rama, you take care of her because she is Krishna's sister. Parvati is a non-different expansion of Yogamaya who appeared on earth from the womb of Yashoda Devi at the same time that Krishna was born from Devaki. Sri Krishna therefore regards Parvati as his sister. Eva it yukta prakarena sakshan bhajinutva um, the word eva. Uh, Sri Sanatan Goswami has split these words this, the first line, Krishnasya plus Bhagini plus Eva plus Esha. And Eva means like, in which case the meaning will be, she is just like Krishna's sister. Um, that is because Saksha um, Bhavini to she, she was not directly a sister. She is non different from Maya, who was born from the womb of Yashoda Devi. Yatva Subhadra Vats Nehavatram. Another meaning is she is like Subhadra. She is a, a recipient of Lord Krishna's affection, like Subhadra. That also Eva fits in there. Atmani Bhagavat Avatar Twar Nijaswarupi Bhagavati Eva Va Ramate Ramate Iti Tasaso Bisan Etam Bika. Apart from that, um, because he himself, Lord Shiva himself, is an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. Even though he takes pleasure in himself or he takes pleasure in the Supreme Lord, Atmarama also means one who takes pleasure in the Supreme Soul. Still, uh, he does not disregard this lady, Ambika. Vichitra Bhagavan Nama Sankirtana Kathotsa Vai Sadevam Ramayan Vishnu Jana Sangha Sukham Bhajit you give her pleasure by always holding wonderful festivals with singing of Lord Vishnu's names and recitation of his glories. At those times, she enjoys the company of Lord Vishnu's devotees. So the Phalama, here he states um, the result of taking care of Ambika, the result of Lord Shiva's taking care of Ambika. So in her association, he gets to experience uh, the uh, holy names of the Supreme Personality of God, uh, Nama Sankirtana, uh, pertaining to the various holy names of the Lord. In that way, he gets the opportunity to serve 
the Supreme Lord in many different ways. Mm, according to Madhvacharya, and he quotes evidence from uh, here, he, he, his followers quote uh, evidence from the Puranas. <clears throat> when Sita Devi, uh, before uh, Ravana attempted to abduct Sita Devi, a duplicate Maya Sita was presented. And the Vastavi Sita, the actual Sita, she was ultimately taken to Kailas, where Lord Shiva and Parvati had the opportunity to serve her until Agni Pariksha, until the time when later on, after the Lord, Lord Ram conquered over Ravana. And at that time, Maya Sita and Vastavi Sita, the real Sita, they were switched back until that time. So you now we see that constantly Parvati Devi, Lord Shiva, is very fond of serving serving uh, Lord Shiva, uh, serving uh, Sita Devi, uh, Lord Ram, and so on. Happens all the time. Lord Shiva refutes Narada's praise. Shiva Rikshidu Acha. Tato Maheshwaro Matas Rabhava Namita Nanaha Naradam Bhagavan Bhaktam Namadat Vaishnava Agrani Shri Parikshit said, Dear Mother, Lord Shiva was so embarrassed by hearing this that he lowered his face. Then the leader of the Vaishnavas answered, the great devotee Narada. Lord Shiva's first reaction was to feel ashamed at hearing himself praised. Then he began to think that such that since the praise was altogether untrue, Narada might be making fun of him. Why did he think like this? Because he was the leader of the Vaishnavas. He was the most important of the Vaishnavas. Lord Shiva is the most important of the Vaishnavas. Sri Maheshwar Vach. Aho Vatamahat Kashtam. Sri Mahesha said, Oh, how painful this is, my dear Narada. Free of every trace of false pride. How can you compare me, the root of all pride, to Krishna, the Lord of Prideless Sages? Lord Shiva presides over the material force of Ahankara by which Every one from the rulers of planets on down uh, thinks himself very important. And so Lord Shiva has some reason to blame himself for the false ego that pervades the, the material universe. Narada, in contrast, is free from the influence of Ahankara and so should not be idolizing Lord Shiva. And the opposite end to Lord Shiva is in the spectrum of egotism. Lord Krishna is a source of pure pridelessness. Lord Shiva implies by this comparison that no real relationship can exist between himself and Lord Krishna, who are so opposite in nature. Sarvesham loke shatvadinupano abhivanana karanam mulam mukhyadishthana. Lord Shiva is the source, is the prime source of false ego. Uh, for all the false egos that are present in uh, the various controllers of the worlds, and others. Another meaning, Yadva, Vrutrasya, Hankara, Dishthatritva, Sarvesham Jivanam, Ye, Abhimana, Dhana, Abhijana, Aishwarya, Madaha, Desha, Moolam, Ahankwa. Because Rudra is the presiding deity of the principle of false ego. Um, all the um, attitudes of conceit that are found in the living entities uh, pertaining to possession of wealth, um, sovereignty, uh, 
um, aristocracy. Um, Lord Rudra is the, is the source of all that. On the other hand, Sri Krishna is Ishwara. He's the master. He's, he is the master of all those who have given up all forms of conceit. So there's no possibility of there being a relationship between me and Sri Krishna. And covered by many false identities. I consider myself the Lord of the universe, the all-knowing giver of knowledge, the liberated bestower of liberation, the devoted grantor of devotion for Vishnu. One might think that the universal controller of false ego should be immune to its influence. Lord Shiva now denies this, describing himself as subject to Ahankar. He says he also considers himself a dear devotee of Vishnu and a recipient of Vishnu's special mercy. And such a mentality, he thinks, is but another influence of false ego. When the fearful time of annihilation arrives, in which everything must be devoured, I am obliged by the mode of ignorance to destroy the entire cosmos. When I think of this, I feel ashamed. Aham eva sarve bhyat paramam maha abhimanavan ityaha. Is Anathan Goswami says that Lord Shiva here implies that uh, I am the most um, greatly conceited amongst everyone in existence. I think that as a devotee of Lord Vishnu, I am the bestower of devotion to Lord Vishnu. I consider I consider that I am the supreme recipient of Lord Vishnu's mercy. I am dear to Lord Vishnu and so on. I cause others to experience such false ego. I cause others to experience such false ego. The same person. Uh, is also greatly conceited, referring to himself. Ata eva Krishna si kripa lakshana abhikar kinchit nasti di tatvaryam. So, his uh, intention is to uh, communicate uh, his attitude that I don't, there's not even a symptom of Krishna's mercy upon me. When I think of this, I feel ashamed. Means when I think that I have to do something which will not be done, um, I'm contaminated by uh, embarrassment. That I have to destroy it. The entire uh, Vedic motto. Is sarve sukhino bhavantu. Let everyone be happy. Uh, so, in Vedic dharma, we don't find happiness when others are unhappy. Mahi narada varteta kripale shopichet dhare tata kim pari jato sha aranado maya ranaha. Dear Narada, if I have even a drop of the mercy of Lord Hari. Why did he fight me when he took away the Parijata flower when Aniruddha stole Usha and on other such occasions? Maam kim aradhaye dasam kim me tachadishet prabhu swagamai kalpitai stvamcha janam madhyamu khan kuru. Why would he worship me, his servant, and why would he order me? Turn people away from me by concocting your own versions of scripture. 
you know, Lord Shiva tries to prove not only that Sri Krishna hardly cares for him, but that the Lord actually holds him in contempt. Otherwise, Lord Shiva argues, Krishna would not have opposed him in battle on several occasions as when Krishna stole Indra's Parijata flower and when Anirudha stole Usha, the daughter of Banasura. Furthermore, when, the, when a master pretends to worship a servant, that servant is actually insulted and exposed to public ridicule. Pretense may even indicate that the master secretly holds some grudge against the servant and wants to humiliate. This may have been the case in such instances as when Krishna worshipped Shiva to obtain an excellent son. Lord Shiva thus concludes that Krishna is asking benedictions from him indicates not Krishna's favor, but Krishna's contempt. Rather than overlook Lord Shiva's transgression, Krishna punishes him in subtle ways. Lord Shiva is supposed to be a great devotee of Krishna because he teaches pure devotion service. Yet Krishna ordered him to teach Mayavada Ajis. Of course, Lord Shiva is actually a pure devotee and a recipient of Lord Krishna's favor. Even his teaching atheism is done for the sake of protecting the confidentiality of devotion service. But a pure devotee, naturally dissatisfied with himself, may often claim to have no spiritual status. The last two lines of this verse are a quotation from the Brahat Sasranama of the Padma Purana. A paraphrase, straight paraphrase from Sri Sanatana Goswami's commentary. Lord Shiva considers deeply within himself that Krishna hasn't forgiven him for his offenses uh, at Krishna's lotus feet. He also indicates regarding the last two lines of this verse, uh, Lord Shiva indicates that the symptom of having received Krishna's mercy is that the recipient of Krishna's mercy will propagate devotional service unto the Supreme Person. They've got it. Otherwise, he implies, uh, actually he has been neglected, completely neglected by the Supreme Lord. Lord Shiva feels a remorse here that uh, um, even though the Supreme Lord wanted to protect devotion service unto himself and very expertly with a great uh, expertise, skillfully, he had Lord Shiva propagate um, Mayavada in order to make it difficult for people to accept your devotional service unto his lotus feet. Bhakti Visheshena Tat Asahishnu Tayashi Shivena Tatha Aradhapam. Still, Lord Shiva, who possesses a special kind of devotion unto the Lord, cannot tolerate that. And therefore, he repents. According to Madhvacharya also, Shankara, Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya was Mahima, uh, what is his name? Manima. Manima. Manima is an associate of Lord Shiva. So it looks like Lord Shiva empowered Manima to do this work of spreading Mayavada. Ava yod mukti datratvam yad bhava stauti krishtavat tachatit darunam tasya bhaktanam Shruti Dukkadam, who joyfully prays the power of me and my wife to bestow the liberation. But we think this part terrible because the Lord's devotees feel distressed to hear of it. Vaishnavas do not like to hear that anyone other than Lord Vishnu can award liberation. That explains it. They cannot hear that. Mukti Pradhata Sarvesham Vishnu Stated by Lord Shiva himself. 
When they simply hear the, the very word liberation, pure Vaishnavas cannot tolerate it. Lord Shiva sends Narada to the residence of Vaikuntha. Tat Krishna Parshada Shrestha Namantasya Dayaspadam Vidhikintu Kripasara Bhajo Vaikuntha Vasinaha. Therefore, O best of Krishna's associates, do not think me a recipient of his compassion. Rather, those who obtain the essence of his mercy are the residents of Vaikuntha. You yourself are the best of Krishna's associates. So, you know yourself better about this. Because Narada is himself one of Lord Vishnu's principal attendants in Vaikuntha. You should not have to be told that the Vaikuntha Vasis, the residents of Vaikuntha, are true recipients of the Lord's mercy. In the next six verses, X 43 through 48, Lord Shiva specifies their qualifications. Bhaktya Rajya Priyam Harim. Sarvarthas Siddhayo Labdhva Pantir Drishtya Pinandrita. They have given up everything as worthless, strong. Worshipping their dear Lord Hari in pure devotion, they have no respect for the desirable achievements of this world. They will not even glance at those perfections. This is called a devotee, in pure devotion. Some devotees have always been residents of Vaikuntha and others elevated to Vaikuntha from the material world. Even the process of self-surrender by which the sadhana siddha Vaishnava was attained by Kuntha is glorious. The successful sadhakas attack the failure of Lord Vishnu by focusing their devotion on him alone, ignoring every other means of success, including the religious principles of the Vedas and the mystic perfections of yoga. When material perfections come automatically to advanced Vaishnavas as secondary effects of exclusive devotion, the Vaishnavas pay no attention to them, as if these treasures that others struggle to obtain were worthless garbage. Tesham Krishna Kripasara Bhakta Kripasara Bhakta Lakshana Bhakta Jai Rityadi Shak Shokya Parama Mahatmyam Darshayam Nadu Vaikuntha Prabhaka Sadhana Bhakta Shenaiva Mahatmya Maha Sapada Shokena In six Verses beginning with text 43. Text 43. Yes. He begins to describe the great uh, glory of the residents of Vaikuntha in order to point out that they have received the, uh, they exhibit the symptoms of having received. Um, the mercy of, uh, the essence of the mercy of Lord Krishna. In order to point out that, in one and a half verses, he points out about the exalted process by which they attained Vaikuntha. He talks about that in glory. So they are not interested in any of the Purushanthas. Uh, um, the Purushatras other than Bhagavad Prema. They have no interest in Dharma the No interest in the yoga, they have no interest in yoga siddhis. Dhyanascha Ani Mahadayana, Ani Mahaman, Ani Ma Prabhupi, Ishita, so many of these eight primary siddhis and uh, the remaining secondary siddhis. They are not interested in any of these. Even when they attain all of this by the strength of their worship, incidentally, naturally, they don't even glance at them. Vastamudhya Nasvikrata. They do not accept them as anything substantial. 
Okay, so let me know that. Uh, next will be one point three point forty four. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, no questions. Okay, then you can, if there are questions, you can bring it. Okay, just give me a minute. Hare Krishna. Okay. I could not understand in one per part it was written that the dice was equal to something like that. I think it's a sixth, sixth verse or something like that. What is the meaning of that? The dice. The dice are all Krishna's dice and also his devotees. So it refers to some past time. Uh, let me bring it up. That was it. The sixth verse. Or the previous section. What is the sixth verse? First of all, we started with text eleven. No, then the next one only. I think. I think it was. I remember only right? the sixth. Or the sixth. Here, Lord Shiva had also overheard Krishna while playing dice with his queen Rukmini. When Krishna was playing dice with his queen Rukmini, Lord Krishna, he declared his devotee even more glorious than himself in order to allure the dice into acting as his devotees by serving him nicely. Place of the Dick this is 26. Oh, 26, sorry. <laughs> Lord Shiva heard Lord Vishnu prom uh, Lord Krishna promise to those dice uh, while he was playing dice with uh, Rukmini Devi that worship of my devotees are greater than is greater than worship of me. Okay, anything else? All right. I'm sure that's what the relationship is passing to the answer. But it's not on the power of the view, which can be the view of the moment.